Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you How very you? much. Very well indeed. Thank. Well, well, you know. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm probably a little bit down than than a lot of people who, uh, who perhaps are more supportive of the, what the government is doing at the moment in various areas. And we'll get to that in just a moment. First up, uh, I know what you want to talk about this morning is a, a new twenty million pound uh, fund that's been set up by the government to help life science companies uh, expand manufacturing in the UK. Never more have we known how important it is to uh, make sure we have got this high tech manufacturing in this country than since the COVID pandemic. Tell us uh, how what it actually involves and uh, who can apply for it. Yeah, so it's life sciences um, companies can apply to uh, to expand manufacturing, to develop new manufacturing. And so the fund actually opens uh, today. Uh, it's to be spent this year. So you're you know, looking for um, uh, immediate results uh, from it to, to, to help build and develop our uh, life sciences cluster uh, sector. We talk about building back better. Well, this is, this is that kind of thing. It helps seed fund what's already going on, allows smaller businesses to get involved in a, our incredible, um, well-beating, well-leading uh, life sciences um, sector. And when we talk about life sciences, what, what do we actually mean? Well, it talks about the vaccine programme is, is indeed one of, uh, uh, you know, something that comes out of that, but it's, it's cancer research. In my area of uh, South, South West London, my constituency, I have the Institute of Cancer Research, which one of the, the uh, leading uh, cancer research uh, uh, organizations in the world and what they do they actually come up with uh, things from conception to bring it through to a level that uh, it becomes more investable for, for private companies to, to, to come in and do that next level of research and development but it essentially brings it from concept through to um, uh, a drug a vaccine a pill or whatever it is treatment that can then be used in our hospitals and across our NHS. Okay. Um, let's also talk about all of the other big stories today related to life sciences and uh, to uh, uh, vaccines and the like. Uh, big concerns are being raised about the risk of blood clots uh, for those taking the AstraZeneca Oxford jab, obviously developed here and manufactured in larger, a large number of the doses here as well. Uh, we've seen in Oxford uh, the child vaccine trials have been halted temporarily. Um, oh, I'm still blown away, but 300 people volunteer their children as young as six for, for a trial vaccine vaccine. Um, the Moderna vaccine does start today, which is encouraging. But there is now concern raised by not just the uh, European Medi- Medicine Agency, uh, but also others that, that there is a risk to blood clots. And the trade off of risk of getting COVID and a blood clot as a result of that for young people and getting the vaccine and the low risk of, COVID, of blood clots from that, there, there may actually be advice coming forward from the agencies in the next few days that actually young people should avoid these vaccines. Is that correct? Well, it's right that the scientists are working on the latest information, the latest data. Um, as far as I understand, the, uh, the uh, blood plot uh, instances across the, uh, uh, the, the entire rollout has been 0.000016. Uh, and there's no uh, of a percent and there's no causal link as, as, as yet demonstrated. So that's why it's important that they take the, next, or the best information, text, t- take the best data. And that's what they're doing at the moment by pausing. But the clear advice at the moment still is if you're invited to get the AstraZeneca vaccine or indeed Moderna or Pfizer, please do go and get it because you're much more likely to be safe, to, 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 to survive, to be healthy, but also to help us um, roll out our economy again and get back to those freedoms, which I know you've been championing over the last year yeah. um, so hard. Uh, get back to it. The vaccine programme and that invitation is the way to do it. Why, why isn't the government championing getting back to our freedoms? Well, we are absolutely. Are we? we are. I speak to yeah, absolutely. I speak to businesses Where? day in, day out. I speak to the hospitality sector. Yesterday, I was looking at retail, uh, uh, visiting retail sector to see how what they're doing to, to reopen. It is incredibly frustrating, Julia. I mean, you know, the, but we do want to get back to uh, to enjoying those freedoms. I don't think any politician uh, that I know, uh, certainly in the UK, that that, that likes to uh, the position that we're in. But we are in um, the tail end. Or I hope the tail end of a global pandemic. Um, I, I wish I shared your, your faith in your fellow politicians. I can think of two in particular who are very much enjoying their new authoritarian role. Um, you say um, you say you want to you know, get hospitality, you get you know hospitality in particular and other businesses back, and you are you know, are a, bit, a small business minister. An awful lot of small businesses will be in the hospitality, cafes, pubs, uh, restaurants, uh, bars, um, desperately trying to get open again. Um, presumably, then, when you talk about it's important, you know, to go on when we talk about COVID vaccine, to go on the latest information and the latest 
latest data. You just said that. We should also do that when it comes to reopening businesses. Um, so why then has the government failed to present any evidence to the High Court ahead of a judicial review uh, that starts in a week or two's time, um, brought by Hugh Osmond and, and Sasha uh, Lord uh, against the government, uh, on the basis of that why should hospitality not be allowed to open indoors at the same time as retail? No evidence, no data has ever been presented to suggest that hospitality isn't as safe to open indoors. If you want small businesses to do well and to thrive, you need to allow them to trade and make a profit. So why don't you no, want absolutely. data no, then? Julia, Julia I'm, I'm, the, I'm also the hospitality minister and the retail minister, so, so I absolutely uh, hear that every day. I won't comment on the uh, on the High Court uh, uh, question because that's that's ongoing and we'll see, see, see where that goes. But from everything that we do, we know it's always been a settled policy that schools will open, uh, or, you know, will close last, open first, and that was really important to, to get schools back. And when you bring people back together again in any format, we know that um, there is a risk of transmission going up. And so we have we, we remained other areas where people, we remain people being disconnected, if you like. And, uh, you know, hospitality has been one of those. We want to remain cautious so that we can be, uh, go on a one direction journey with this roadmap. We don't, what we've learned that lesson from the autumn when we were starting and stopping because of the deer system, because of the variance of these kind of things. We want to go cautiously so that businesses, in, in particular wet lead pubs or something that were throwing away a lot of food before Christmas, a lot of drink, because that stop start process. Why, why would why would it have to? No, but, but why would it have to stop again? There's a, the, we, we public health England. Well, the only data we have got is from them in terms of the the number of cases, the percentage of cases that we, they thought to have come from hospitality. Given that we had you know track and trace and people checking their QR codes to get in and out of pubs and people taking names and everything. 2.3%, I believe, is the figure of the number of cases that resulted from hospitality. That's a huge industry that has been closed down, unable to make a profit. We've lost thousands and thousands of pubs and restaurants that will never reopen again. You're the minister responsible for making sure those, uh, those businesses do well. There is no evidence, there is no data that has ever been presented that justifies all of these COVID-secure businesses are not being allowed to reopen on the 12th of April along with shops. What you won't ever hear me say is that hospitality is unsafe because it because it's not. So it's safe. Uh, what, so why but, can't what, it reopen on April the twelfth? What, what you also have to, to, to look at, as I say, is how people um, interact, how people connect mm -hmm. um, the practice. As I say, we've brought people back in schools, so we've just got to go carefully to see how schools that have been back for four weeks. We, there's been but no also, rising but, cases. But but also, Julia, it's important to understand that the, I'm afraid the elephant in the room in all of this is alcohol because people's behaviour does affect, uh, not necessarily in the pub, when they're a regulated um, uh, position, but we saw what ha was happening at the end of last year when we had the um, the 10 o'clock curfew, when what was happening after that 10 p.m. curfew, when people were... Another, another failed there, government there policy. When we limit people's behaviour by law um, because when they're uh, under the influence of alcohol. So it's those kind of things that are all in the mix. Sorry, well Paul, as, um, Paul, with all due respect, are you under some bizarre illusion that people are not drinking alcohol right now and they're not doing it in non-COVID secure places, either outdoors, in the parks, and then, yeah, in, the, and then in their gardens? If you think everybody last weekend was sitting outdoors in their homes, you've got, I mean, you're living in a fantasy land. I'll be, I'd be surprised if most MPs and most ministers didn't have people in their homes drinking indoors at the weekend no well i had people drinking outdoors in the weekend i can tell you that but uh that, no, you, that you now, would, but yes. not indoors certainly but, oh uh, certainly um, i mean certainly the, not because no, no one's it, done that at uh, all no there's no doubt about not. it julia the highest prevalence of uh, of uh, you know cases that i was seeing last year was informal gatherings it was um uh, mixing in households no doubt about that at all mm. um so but, open but up say, hospitality work with people's behavior trying to um make sure people didn't connect because the only way you can transmit the virus is there if you're within breathing distance of another person you physically can't do it any other way so it's actually you know separating people in that way was um a, nece uh, a necessity but i know we're on different sides of the argument here and it is incredibly frustrating to still be in this position 
um, so long after the first lockdown. Well, and, and while we have a vaccine that works, and yet for some reason it still doesn't mean we have freedom. Just finally, I must ask you, again, in relation to business, an awful lot of uh, uh, business in the company rely on tourism, they rely on travel, not just people coming to the country, people being leaving the country, being able to go away. Um, but um, we have a big issue in terms of access to travel at the moment. And one of the big concerns, even if it does reopen on May the 17th or in the weeks following that, is the cost for the average family of going away because of the PCR test. You need a PCR test to get on the plane, PCR test to come back and two PCR tests afterwards. You are looking at probably 400 quid uh, realistically at least per member of the family. That makes a foreign holiday off the scale impossible for most families. Is the government going to do something about the cost of PCR tests which you can get for 20 or 30 euros on the continent and cost at least 120, usually around 140 pounds here? Yeah, I think these are all part of the mix of the discussions that are happening as we uh, look to uh, to reopen the foreign travel, because clearly we want to make it available in an equitable way. We want to make, make, make sure that that, 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 um, that, that families of, okay. of all backgrounds can travel. You know, you know it shouldn't be that, uh, that you have to uh, be incredibly rich to be able to do these sort of things, okay. because you can then insulate yourself from it, any of these things that we've been discussing. But that is all part of the discussions.